Jane Austen is generally considered as a major flag bearer of Englishness and its cult. Often her novels are seen as encapsulations of English cultural identity and as the critic Patrick Parinder has suggested, they have been providing lessons in Englishness for over 200 years. Indeed, in her fiction, Austen is interested in characters that embody Englishness and the values she associated with it. In Emma, Mr Knightley is introduced as a sensible man, a man possessed of solid common sense. Emma defines him to her friend Harriet Smith by saying, you might not see in a hundred with gentlemen so plainly written as in Mr Knightley. He behaves always in the true English style and has genuine English delicacy towards the feelings of other people. But Emma also opens up insights into in the Englishness of England as a country, as landscape. Let's consider the following scene. The season is summer. After picking strawberries in the garden of Mr Knightley's uh, Donwell Abbey, a group of characters goes walking around the estate. It was in itself a charming walk and the view which closed it extremely pretty. The considerable slope, at nearly the foot of which the abbey stood, gradually acquired a steeper form beyond its grounds, and at half a mile distant was a bank of considerable abruptness and grandeur, well clothed with wood. And at the bottom of this bank, favourably placed and sheltered, rose the Abbey Mill Farm, with meadows in front, and the river making a close and handsome curve around it. It was a sweet view, sweet to the eye and the mind. English verdure, English culture, English comfort, seen under a sun bright without being oppressive. Austen was a writer of nature and of landscape. In the biographical notice about his sister, her brother Henry defined her as a warm and judicious admirer of landscape, both in nature and in canvas. She was familiar with the theories of the picturesque, particularly the works of the Reverend William Gilpin, published from the 1780s to the 1790s, where he delineated this new aesthetic category, defining the correctly picturesque scene as one, the texture of which is without straight lines, rough, intricate, varied or broken, and one originating from a harmonious combination of different levels, a dark foreground, a front screen, side screens, a brighter middle distance, and so on. The picturesque mixes the beautiful and the sublime as they had been defined by Edmund Burke. The aesthetic pleasure it provides derives from contrasts, dissonances, irregularities, fragmentation. And it implies a picturesque way of seeing, characterised by the mobility of the point of view. However, this is not the only relevant context to gain an understanding of Austen's representations of English landscape and its implicit Englishness. There are also other important factors the impact of industrialization on the countryside and its progressive depopulation, and so the increasingly relevant problem of integrating rural landscape and industrial urban areas. The impact of the improvements introduced by wealthy landowners on their estates, improvements which often affected their dependent workers by displacing them in order to make space for the improvements. The impact of the agricultural revolution, which introduced new techniques, and of the enclosures, a process of privatization of common lands, as sanctioned by Acts of Parliament from the early 1700s to the early 1800s. Uh, this fencing off of the commons, as they were called, brought about the expansion of large land holdings to the detriment of smaller ones and materially damaged peasants, since these commons were a source of free shared resources. As a result, 
large numbers of unemployed people started moving around the countryside and towards urban centres looking for work. Landscape in Austin is a product of all these interlocking planes. Uh, aesthetic, uh, subjective, economic, political and uh, social. So landscape is a place of the self in the sense of a romantic process of defining personal identity. But it is also the place of a community and uh, a location of the national identity. Now, if we return to the quotation from Emma we've already seen. It was a sweet view, sweet to the eye and the mind. English verdure, English culture, English comfort, seen under a sun bright without being oppressive. It becomes clear that the association linking the adjective English with the landscape, cultivation and climate crystallises a complex, wide-ranging set of meanings and implications. The, la the, the, the landscape is, importantly, near Donwall Abbey. It is part of its estate the property of Mr Knightley, the model English gentleman. So there is an evident connection between the man, landscape and the nation. Austin emphasises the national qualities of this landscape, as I said, the cultivation, the sweetness, the tranquility it conveys, the pleasant, unoppressive warmth. Uh, these are all ways of defining Englishness. In this fashion, the novelist connects the natural space to the idea of national identity with her distinctive conciseness, her economy of art. We can find similar scenes in earlier novels too. Uh, let's take uh, Pride and Prejudice, for instance. There, Austen presents us with the carefully arranged landscape of Pemberley, the residence of the Darcy family. In the first chapter of the third volume, as Elizabeth and her aunt and uncle, the gardeners, approach the house in their carriage, a fascinating view unfolds. The park was very large and contained great variety of ground. They entered it in one of its lowest points and drove for some time through a beautiful wood, stretching over a wide extent. They gradually ascended for half a mile and then found themselves at the top of a considerable eminence where the wood ceased and the eye was instantly caught by Pemberley House, situated on the opposite side of a valley into which the road with some abruptness wound. It was a large handsome stone building standing well on rising ground and backed by a ridge of high woody hills and in front a stream of some natural importance was swelled into greater but without any artificial appearance. Its banks were neither formal nor falsely adorned. Elizabeth had never seen a place for which nature had done more, or where natural beauty had been so little counteracted by an awkward taste. This is a landscaped park in the tradition of English landscape art, which had developed during the 18th century thanks to such innovators as William Kent, Lancelot Capability Brown and Humphrey Repton. Based on this tradition, the landscape at Pemberley blends art and nature, order and variety, a translation of the aesthetics of the picturesque, which here in particular is characterised by respectful alterations. These respectful alterations qualify Darcy and his uh, forebears, his predecessors, as the promoters of a balance between the human and the natural, the aesthetic and the productive innovation and tradition. In this respect, Darcy's approach is widely different from that proposed by a character uh, like Henry Crawford in Mansfield Park, who supports an idea of the improvement of an estate that is more decisively on the side of transformation than conservation. Ultimately, as we see in Pride and Prejudice, Austen is not against improvements. Rather, she is critical of indiscriminate changes, especially those that, in keeping with prevailing and passing fashions, dissociate the landscape from its human and social community-related contexts. In other words, 
those transformations of the landscape that do not respect and reflect Englishness, its history and its present-day importance. Thank you.